Hi you guys, uh, welcome back. This is Professor Nick here and I am streaming from the comfort of my own home. Um, here we have our virtual laboratory, uh, laboratory for the Safer at Home uh, mandate and I'm really excited to be with you guys today because I have a really fun and awesome thing to talk to you about. Um, now today we're going to talk about one of my favorite things. We're going to talk about the sun. Now, the sun, of course, is out some days here in Los Angeles, some days it's not. We're pretty lucky in that we get a lot of sunlight, but it's really important to know what are we getting from the sun? What is that light and how can we use it? Now, here on Earth, we use it every single day to do a lot of things. We use that sunlight to power some of our electronics uh, because we have solar power. We also use it to grow food, which is very important. And what sunlight gives to us is it gives us energy. So we have this ball of gas at the center of our solar system of hydrogen and helium, and that's our sun, and it gives us energy. And when we use that energy, we can continue to uh, be productive and uh, run around and do all the things that we do as people. But not only do we need that sunlight as human beings, other things need it too, like my basil plant. My basil plant needs sunlight as well. Now, what we're going to talk about today is one of the other types of light that we can't see that does come from the sun. Now, when we look at the sun, we don't want to look directly at it, but it's really, really bright. And there are a lot of different kinds of light that are out there. Now, the types of light that we see all fall into this very small little part of light called visible light. That's all the different colors that you've ever seen in your life. Purple, blue, red, yellow, green, orange, magenta, fuchsia, teal, whatever other colors you can think of. But there are other colors, other types of light, I should say, that we don't see. They're hidden to us, but we actually do use them in our lives. Have you ever put something in the microwave? We actually use microwaves to heat up our food. Microwaves are a type of light. Now, there are other types of light as well. We've got x-rays that come from the center of our galaxy. We've got ultraviolet light, UV light. We've got visible light. We've got infrared, which is heat. We've got radio waves, so when we listen to the radio, uh, that's actually light as well. And the difference between all these types of light is how big the waves and wavelengths are of them. Now today, the one that I want to talk to you about, the coolest, the one that we don't see but can actually be a little bit harmful to us as people, is ultraviolet light. Now, if we wanted to survive, and um, let's say we're blasting off Earth and we're going into outer space, and we're taking a trip all the way to Mars. Let's say we found a way to colonize Mars. Elon Musk was successful, and we're living on Mars. We have to find a way to protect ourselves and shelter ourselves um, from that ultraviolet light that's coming from the sun. Now, what I want to show you guys is how we can find a way to filter sunlight and what some of the ways that we've created as human beings to do that are. And to do that, I have a few things that I'm going to use to demonstrate and show you. Now, in front of me, I have a few different really fun chemicals and, um, and substances that we're going to be talking about today. And the first thing that I want to talk about today is I want to talk about these, these small beads because we're going to use these. These are, are like little detectives, little detective beads, and their job is to sniff out and find ultraviolet light. Now, ultraviolet light, as I said, is light that comes from the sun, and we can't see it, but it exists. When you go to the beach or when you go outside, a lot of times we want to try to put on sunscreen because that helps protect us against those ultraviolet rays from the sun that can be damaging to our body. Now, these beads, when they find ultraviolet light, they change color. Now, right now you can see that they're clear, and, and that's because the only type of light that's shining on them is visible light. Light that I can see all the colors of, green, orange, purple, pink. But I actually have something right here. This is an ultraviolet flashlight that's going to let me um, shine some ultraviolet light on these beads. And let's see what happens to them. Are you ready? I'll actually, uh, I'll hide this for you. I'll make it a little bit of a surprise. So I'll put them all in my hand first. And then I'll shine this light on them. Ready? Here we go. 
Let's count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And see what happened. Check this out. So these beads completely changed color, and that's because they detected this ultraviolet light that's shining from my flashlight. So we've identified as humans a way that we can actually register ultraviolet light and detect when it exists. Now this would be important because if we were to take our spaceship and fly to Mars or fly to somewhere else, then we'd want to make sure that we're detecting if there are high levels of ultraviolet light coming from the sun. Now here on Earth, our atmosphere actually protects us from that ultraviolet light. As we know, certain elements like the ozone layer, right, in our atmosphere help to break down different parts of ultraviolet light and um, it protects us here on Earth from it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these beads just kind of sit here and what you'll do is you'll see that as we watch they kind of fade back to being normal colored. Now our job is to find a way, if we're living on Mars, to block that ultraviolet light. What kinds of materials block ultraviolet light? Let's say we were to build uh, a greenhouse or a house uh, made of glass, um, let's say, and we wanted to see everything outside because it's really pretty, a brand new landscape on Mars. We wanted to see Olympus Mons and all the other cool things, um, and, we, and we built our house. Would our house, if there was you know, plastic on the on the sides of the windows, uh, or windows were made of plastic or glass, would that protect us from ultraviolet light? Well, let's see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my beads inside of here. And I'm going to put this lid on, and let's see if plastic can block ultraviolet light. Are we ready? All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Boom! What do we see? Is it working? Oh yeah, the ultraviolet light is getting straight through here, right? So our ultraviolet light is coming right through this plastic. So plastic isn't a good way to protect against ultraviolet light. If we want to protect against ultraviolet light, we're going to need to find something else, right? Now, we all, when we know, when we go to the beach, we protect ourselves against ultraviolet light in what way? with sunscreen, right? So let's actually see the effect of sunscreen on this, um, on these beads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sunscreen and I am going to spray it, my spray sunscreen, right on top of here. Perfect. Let's do a little bit more. All the way around. And now I'm going to put it right on top. Now, what do you think will happen if I try to shine my UV light on top right now? So inside of my sunscreen, we have different ingredients that actually block and break down that ultraviolet light and scatter it around. So let's see what happens. Ready? Is it working? How awesome is that? So by spraying my sunscreen on top of here, we can actually block the ultraviolet light. So the ultraviolet light is no longer getting through. So if we were to go and live on Mars or live somewhere else, we would need to find a way to block the ultraviolet light. And we know that we have chemicals and we know that we have certain specific ways that we've invented and that scientists have come up with to actually block that ultraviolet light. Now, we need to be careful about it because when the ultraviolet light hits our bodies, it can actually break down little bits of our DNA and cause mutations, and that's why we need to be very careful. Now, once again, it doesn't work here, but if I flip it upside down and I shine this light on the side that didn't have sunscreen on it, all of a sudden you can see that that ultraviolet light is getting straight through. Pretty crazy. Now, the next thing that I want to talk to you all about is the second thing we'd have to do if we were to go live on Mars. So in our scenario, we've gone to Mars, we figured out a way using these chemicals to build a shield or dome to protect ourselves against ultraviolet light coming from the sun. And actually, we might need to protect ourselves against some of those other things as well, those X-rays and those gamma rays, because the more energy that light has, the lower, the smaller, the shorter the wavelength, the, the more harmful it can be to us as humans. 
So that's why radio waves can pass through things all around us, and that's not really a problem, but if we get into ultraviolet light, x-rays, and gamma rays, those can actually be pretty harmful, and that we need to be very careful uh, in the way that we make sure that we uh, use those. So the second thing we'd need to do if we were to go to Mars is I think we'd need to find a way to harness that energy from the sun to do what we do here on Earth, to grow food. Now, on Mars, would we have soil? Probably not. Well, definitely not. Uh, Mars wouldn't have soil like we have here on Earth because soil is made up of organic matter. When things break down, like plants, um, we actually create soil from all of those organic chemicals and nutrients. We wouldn't have that on Mars, so we'd have to create our own soil and find our own way to grow our plants. Now, what we're going to make here on Earth, we're going to make right now, is a little tiny greenhouse. And this greenhouse is going to be the way by which we can trap in heat and water, and we can provide nutrients to our uh, plant that we're going to grow. So, the first thing that I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to get rid of my UV beads. Perfect. And the second thing that we need if we're going to, uh, to grow in our greenhouse is we need somewhere to grow it. We need a little pot. So I'm going to make a little pot and you can do this at home too. You can make your own little greenhouse. So I'm going to um, put a little Velcro sticker on here. That's going to be what I use for my to stick my pot into my greenhouse. Right like this. Perfect. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, some special moisture retaining chemical. Now this is called perlite, and uh, what you can do is if you have perlite, you can use it, or you can even just make your own little greenhouse uh, using soil that you have from outside. So feel free to do that as well. Let's add a little bit more. Perfect. And now what do plants need to survive they need the same thing that we need. And what is that? That is water. So I'm going to add some water to this. Here we go. Perfect. And secondly, I need a seed. I need something to grow. So the seed that I'm going to use, um, we'll see if you can guess what it is. It looks like this. Very small. Tiny little seed. This is a pea seed. So I'm going to put this right inside here. It's got its water, it's got its nutrients from what I've added, and water for plants contains almost everything they need, right? It's got all those minerals and nutrients inside of it, so if you give a plant water, it's going to be pretty good. Now, what will happen is all of the moisture here, all this water would evaporate away, right? It would evaporate away when it got hot out of here, and the plant wouldn't be left with any more water, so I'd have to water it again, but I don't want to have to do that. Instead, I want to create a greenhouse where all of that moisture and water is kept inside of here. And also, um, I want to make sure that I can trap heat inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cup, my large cup, and put it over top of here. Now, if you make a similar greenhouse at home, you can use any materials that you find. All you need is a seed. You need some water, some medium to, uh, to hold that seed, and then you just need an enclosed space. And this is what I'm going to be using. Now, as the light comes in here, what the light does is the visible light can get through, right? But then once that visible light hits inside of this uh, greenhouse, it hits the ground inside here and it turns into heat when you have enough light. Now, that heat can't actually escape through the plastic, so we're also trapping heat inside of here. The way that greenhouses work is they allow visible light through, but then they trap heat. And heat is that infrared. So because of the way that infrared light works, it can't get out of this greenhouse, and we can trap that heat inside, and uh, we can grow our plants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this plant, this little pea seed, outside, and we're going to track it every day, and we're going to see if we can eventually uh, grow our little pea plant. So what I want you guys to do is at home, see if you can make a greenhouse today with some of the materials that you have. You don't need these UV beads. All you need is some simple uh, greenhouse. You can even use a seed from a fruit or something that you have. And see if you can wait and over a couple of weeks, 
grow a real plant. Then we'll have some food, we'll have a way to protect ourselves from the ultraviolet light, and we will be all ready to blast off and live on Mars if the time comes. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have a really fun interactive lesson for you as well. Um, every day we are adapting. We are so happy that you're here with us. Like, subscribe, um, and we have online classes as well. We're doing everything we can to bring the science to you at home. If you have any suggestions for links, uh, for topics or anything you'd like us to cover during the live stream, please let us know. Otherwise, we hope you all have a fantastic day, and we hope to see you soon. Thanks so much. Bye.